Hello everyone and welcome. Today I'm going to be explaining how I get such perfect legacy characters in all of my runs. If you've seen my other videos, you know I always start with extremely specific things on my legacy characters and I always have like perfect synergy between the two things that each of my legacy characters has. So the first thing you're going to want to do before you start any of your legacy character runs is come up to the second floor on the right side of it here. There's a really handy board that allows you to view your tactics codex. This will help you in planning out what you need to do for your run because you need to have a plan going into it. So the way that you get perfect legacy characters is by rigging the tactic selection screen at the end of the run in your favor as much as possible. So we'll be looking at Black Hole as an example. Let's say you want to get Legacy Black Hole with Durable Black Hole on a legacy character. What you will do is you will go into a run, you will select your legacy characters. The only thing you need to pay attention when selecting your legacy characters is that you need to make sure you don't take another character with something like Legacy Light Spear. Because if you take Legacy Light Spear, it will be in the same slot as Legacy Black Hole, and you won't be able to get this in the middle of your run. Otherwise, there's not much else you have to pay attention to before the run other than one mine crystal setup. But anyways, you go into the run, and during the run, what you want to do is only take Legacy Black Hole and only take Durable Black Hole. Any other tactic that you see during that run, you are going to sell. And why do you do that? to rig the tactic selection that you get at the end of the run. If you only have two tactics total, it's only going to give you two tactic selections there. And you can just finish that legacy character, be done with it, instead of having to go through tons and tons of different runs trying to get these two specific ones, while also having like 10 other ones that can appear in your Legacy Tactic Selections. You don't even need to be doing like high entropy stuff where you have the extra Legacy Tactic Refreshes. This just guarantees that you get what you want. It works the same way if you're going for something like Legacy Black Hole and Black Hole Feast together. In that case, I would just need to get all three upgrades and then into the run, and I'll have all three of those to select from. Where it gets more complicated is once you start going into red effects, because red effects take a certain amount of total tactics in order to unlock. So once you start getting into these, some of them take four to unlock, some of them take five, and then the red itself will add an extra one onto that. So if I were going to go for Black Hole Slow, for example, I would need these three, and then Freezing Cold is a Tier 2 upgrade, so I would need Skill Cold or Attack Cold plus Freezing Cold, and then the Black Hole Slow on top of that. That would be six total tactics that I have during that run. So that is one case where you can end a run and still get bad RNG on your tactic selections. If you wanted, for example, Black Hole Slow and Legacy Black Hole on the same thing, you could maybe not get them. Even if you didn't get both of those, you would have a lot more cohesive thing by having, say, something like Black Hole Slow and Black Hole Duration on your Legacy character. It would still be much better than having something like Black Hole Slow 
and just a completely random other tactic like multi light spears, for example. There's a very big issue with the way that the legacy tactics work right now, and that's if you're playing the game normally, how you probably would be in terms of taking every tactic that you see, you end up with way too many tactics at the end of the run, and you get very random characters. So it's almost like the game is punishing your legacy characters for playing normally, and it's benefiting you from cheating the system, which is really backwards to how it should work. The game should reward you for trying to be creative rather than requiring you to go and do a bunch of extra steps in order to in order to get the specific builds that you want. So I have proposed a a complete rework to the legacy system or the legacy tactics system where it would just be like mine crystals where you unlock the tactics throughout your runs and then you slot them in before runs. I think that would be a much better system than the one that we have now. I don't know if the devs will ever change it in the future, but it's something I've uh, suggested to them. So one last example where you can you can do a little bit more complicated things in order to tip the scales in your favor even more. Even in the case of where I was saying, if I wanted to go for Black Hole Slow and Legacy Black Hole on the same character, that's normally more difficult to do. But what I can do to uh, help out with that and make it completely consistent is by making a first character that has Black Hole Feast on it and Freezing Cold on it. If I end up with a character like that, then I can go ahead and take my second character and start with the first character's legacy of Black Hole Feast and Freezing Cold. So something to know about the legacy tactics that you take from legacy characters. Those ones cannot be given to you at the start or at the tactic selection screen at the end of the run. So in this case, if I take Black Hole Feast and Freezing Cold from my legacy character, they will not show up in the selection. The other benefit is that all I need to do for this next run on the second character is I take Legacy Black Hole, it will activate Black Hole Feast, and then at the next Umber Room, I'm able to get Black Hole Slow. You do not need to fully upgrade a tactic in order to get the red. You just need the uh, pre-requirements. So in this case, you just need Freezing Cold and Black Hole Feast. But to have Black Hole Feast active, you have to have Legacy Black Hole in the first place. But that works towards what I want to do anyways, since I would need to get Legacy Black Hole in the first place to pass it on in my Legacy selection. Hopefully that makes sense. It's a lot more complicated than it needs to be, and like I said, it's kind of stupid that you're rewarded for cheating the system instead of just rewarded for trying to be creative and trying to think of new builds. One other thing I should try to mention here is that in the example where maybe you want Legacy Black Hole and dur Durable Black Hole in the same character, you need to pay close attention to these uh, split path trees. These ones require you to only pick one of the tree. You cannot have more than one, you can't have all three. So if you're looking for a specific one, like durable black hole, you need to make sure you sell large black hole or black hole explosion if it comes up instead. If you're going for a red, or if you're going for, like, Black Hole Feast, the third option on the tree, you can take any one of these. It won't matter. But if you want a specific one, you need to make sure and take that one. One other thing you can do in order to really tip the RNG scales in your favor 
This goes for both either if you're trying to get a specific tactic during your main runs, or if you're trying to set it up on your legacy characters. The chance boost mine crystals are extremely powerful. They make it much more likely to get the element you want, and it makes it where you can get much more of that element to where you can even do like full runs of just that element and you can fill out all of your tactic trees a lot of the a lot of the time some other uh mine crystals that you can try to take to help out with this is initial exchange points and when you eliminate an elite enemy without taking damage, exchange points plus 200. This just helps you get to your tactic ascensions faster. They're not required in any way. You should generally get enough money by the end of the run. If you don't have enough money at Omega Sector, you can fully clear out the Omega Sector and that'll give you a lot of money as well. And the Omega Sector Shop always lets you spend all your money on as many Tactic Ascensions as you need. Otherwise, throughout the run, save all of your money. Don't buy... You can probably buy a couple potentials from the shops if you want. You don't need to buy them, though, to clear the easy setting runs. And it'll be safer if you don't. So, to go along with that, the discount mine crystal is very effective for letting you get extra potentials, letting you maybe get extra tactics, and, but just make sure if you're buying tactics, you only buy the ones that you actually need and sell the rest. Or it can give you just free ascensions as well. So that can help you power up your character through potentials while not having to sacrifice the money that you need for the ascensions. The other one I like for these runs is Blind Rage. After defeating an enemy for 10 seconds, your damage is increased by 40%. You don't need to stack a ton of DPS towards bosses because I'm always playing these runs on normal entropy settings so i'm glad i waited to do this video because it became so much easier with normal mode compared to having to run it even on zero entropy normal mode is extremely easy and we'll see that there are a couple benefits to doing higher entropy runs if you really want the benefits, or if you just really don't like playing on the settings that are very easy. When you're going for red tactics that take 5 or 6, sometimes having this legacy tactic refresh can make the difference between being done in a few runs because of bad luck, or just being done in your first run. And then... Shop refreshes can also make things where you don't need to get as far into the run. If you have a lot of money saved up at the beginning of the run and you get good luck on your shops, you can get a lot more refreshes a lot faster. But you also have to keep in mind that you'll be clearing the run slower too compared to normal. So let's go into normal and talk about legacy character selections for these, and I'll just show how easy the run itself is. So I mentioned this before, but when, once you get into your legacy character selection screen, you need to be more careful. That is because you cannot stack certain legacy types on top of each other. So if I take summon ice spikes here, and I'm trying to get a summon onto my legacy character, it's not going to let me take any summons throughout the run. Same way for if I wanted to get 
a attack based thing like if i wanted to get uh cold attacks on my legacy character i need to make sure i don't take lightning attacks because they're incompatible what i generally take is i just take summon ice spike with ice spike respawn that allows me to clear out the rooms a lot quicker they, these two things will basically just carry you because the run is that easy. They have just no HP on this type of settings. And then generally I'm not putting summons into my legacy characters, so I can just take this for free anyways. I leave my other character slot just left alone, that way... I don't end up running into any problems with compatibilities. So you can see here, even if I don't attack enemies, the ice spikes deal enough damage that with the uh, respawn red effect on them, they're just basically endlessly generating and endlessly dealing damage. So I could almost AFK during the run and still complete it, aside from having to move room to room, obviously. So here in this case, I'll go for Shadow Spike and one of the upgrades for it. I already have a Shadow Spike character, so I don't really care what which one I get. I'll just use an, uh, use it as an example. And I think that's aside from putting red effects onto your characters. I think. Putting an attack itself and one of its upgrades is the best way to go about doing legacy characters. You could put two different attack types, like I could put attack shadow spike and chain lightning, but that's very, that's way more specific to, I would need a certain character that could utilize both of those well. Where if I just have the uh, attack shadow spike and an upgrade for it, that's way more general to being able to put on any character. And especially when you have a limited amount of legacy character selection space, I think that's another really big issue with the way that the game works now, too, is that you don't have enough space to fit all of your characters onto. So here's a good showing of the 90% discount, giving me an extra potential for free, not having to spend any of that money on money I could be using for Tactic Ascensions. And here I'm already at the boss stage, and I'm only a minute into the run. That's how quick these runs can be. Another thing to keep in mind when you're... Oh wow, I took damage from his Shockwave, so I'm not gonna get the perfect clear anymore, but that doesn't really matter that much a really goofy mistake on my part, but no big deal. Uh, so I was getting ready to say another thing to help you really speed run through these runs on the easiest settings where you're just trying to get a few tactics. The only type of combat stages. So what I mean by combat stages are potential selections or tactic selections or max HP, max MP. 
Basically, I just mean anything that makes you go through a combat room like what I'm doing right now. The only ones of those you want to take are the ones for the specific tactics you're trying to get. So in my case, it's just... I want to take every shadow room I see. If I ever have the option between, like, some type of non-combat stage, which would be exchange, event, rest, sortie show, or black market, I always want to take the non-combat stages. Because these types of stages still increase your stage count without taking any time at all to do. That's one of those things that makes speedrunning this game a lot less fun as well, I feel like. To where you'll have some speedrun attempts to where, like, in this run, for example, I got to the first boss stage in a minute of in-game time because I just got really lucky with how many shop selections showed up and non-combat selection showed up. But some runs you can get more than others. Speedrunning this game has a lot of RNG elements to it between your potential selections, your... Uh, what types of stages you're getting, what types of layouts you're getting, even what bosses you're getting. So it's not really that bad, especially if you're just speedrunning it more for fun compared to aiming for a record time. I never really got frustrated with the RNG of the game when I was doing speedruns, but it is one thing that has always made me, like, be less serious about doing speedruns. So here's exactly what I was saying. I have an option to take an electricity stage, but I don't need it. It's not part of what I want to pass on to my legacy characters. So it's much better just to go for the exchange stage instead. You can see that even without me perfect clearing the boss, I have 740 exchange points already saved up, and that's from... It, you get 130 out of... You get 130 exchange points out of selling each tactic. For some reason, in this mode, it's weird because that's one of the benefits of playing on high entropy, but you don't get the other benefits that you do from playing on high entropy on this easy mode, such as having the shop refreshes or having the potential refreshes. Or not potential refreshes. Well, you don't get the potential refreshes, but in terms of this run, you also don't get the legacy character or the legacy tactic selection refreshes. Sorry, there's a lot of terminology in this game, and especially when it comes to legacy things, there's a lot of very similar terminology, like legacy characters, legacy tactics, legacy tactic selections, and then there's legacy skills. So even I get uh, a little bit jumbled up sometimes when it comes to the terminology in the game. So if you guys ever have any questions about terminology from this game, or if something I've explained in a video doesn't quite make sense to you, and you need some help out with it still, always feel free to leave a comment in the comment sections, and I'll try to help out as much as I can. Whenever I'm able to get to the comments, I always try and answer any questions that people have. Another thing you can do if you have questions about the game is... 
there is an official Blaze Blue Entropy Effect Discord. I'll try to remember to link it in the description of this video. If I forget, just leave a comment to remind me and I'll get it linked there. I'm around in that Discord quite often, either just chatting and showing off some of the builds I'm trying out, or if I see anyone with questions there, I try to answer questions there as well. Shops are not being kind to me in terms of giving me tactic ascensions. The other way, if for some reason you don't have exchange points, if you're finding too many shops and getting too many tactic upgrades from them, you can start going into events instead. Because events are either going to give you the tactic upgrades or they're going to give you extra exchange points. Some of the events can give a lot of exchange points. Particularly the ones that... I, I guess this is worth it. So Tactic Ascension is another stage that requires combat, but I could go into the shop and test my luck, or I could get the guaranteed Tactic Upgrade here. Uh, so the other thing I was going to say is that particularly the Sortie Show, or not Sortie Show, the event that requires you to... There's an event where you give up two of your... Two of your mixtures for like 200 exchange points, or 300 exchange points. You get a lot from it. It's one of the better ones for getting free money. The other way to get a lot of free money is just... Or maybe... I don't think you can get Black Market in this difficulty setting, actually. So, scratch that. If you're playing in the higher entropy version of the run, then you'll have Black Market, and you can get the Black Market upgrade for 777 exchange points. But that's also a luck-based thing. You shouldn't really ever need either the extra money from perfect clearing bosses or like the black market upgrade or anything. As long as you're really minimizing the tactics that you're taking. If you ever don't finish all of your tactic ascensions by Omega Sector, you just farm out the entire Omega Sector and it'll give you a lot of money. Oh shoot, I shouldn't have picked that up. I wasn't paying attention. Oh well, it's not a big deal. Alright, so at this point I've explained everything I need to. I could go through until I have my tactics uh, fully ascended, but I'd just be wasting time at this point because I already have a Shadow Spike character made. So at this point, I'll try to lose the run. It's gonna be hard to actually die. Oh man, my Shadow Spikes are just gonna kill everything for me. Why are the enemies not even attacking me? Um... Yeah, I need to, I need to find a way to die. But the enemies are doing, like, no damage per hit. You can see how easy this run is. Just my Shadow Spikes alone are taking everything out. The enemies themselves are, like, missing half their attacks, too. I guess it's partly because I've been playing with the upgraded enemy attack rate, but it just looks like they attack so slow to me now. You have to make sure you either beat the run or die in the run. 
It's very important that you don't try and go to the abort setting, because that one will delete the Evo type. Hopefully these ranged enemies help me die a little bit quicker, but they're only doing 70 damage to... I want the, like, Samurais to hit me, but they attack so slow that I think their attacks keep getting cancelled by the Ice Spikes. Yeah, he's just never gonna be able to attack, I think. Come on, hit me, dude. Please, I want to die. <laughs> The other funny thing about uh, this really easy difficulty setting run is that, from what I saw, traps just don't deal any damage to you. You can. I was standing in the spikes and the lasers in the first area, and they just weren't hitting me at all. So eventually the enemies will finally finish me off. And you can die as soon as you have the either the tactics you want, the ascensions you want, or both. It's not completely necessary to ascend them all the way to gold. If you're if you mainly play casually or play on lower settings, it doesn't matter as much to max out the tactic rarity. It's just something that if you have a character or if you have a couple tactics that are your favorite and you end up using them in a lot of different runs, then you might as well spend a couple extra minutes getting them to gold compared to just dying as soon as you have them. But if you're going for like, if you're just trying to test out certain tactics on a character or you don't really care about min-maxing your DS, your DPS, you can just pick up those two tactics, or few tactics that you need, and die right away. So now that we're on Legacy Character Selection Screen, you'll be able to see I only picked up these three upgrades throughout the entire run. The only other tactics I had were from my Legacy Character, which cannot enter your selection here. So now I can take Attack Shadow Spike, that's a guaranteed chance, and my second chance is also guaranteed, because there's only two options left. So now I can take Range Shadow Spikes to have the larger range ones, and there we go. In only 8 minutes of in-game time, I'm sure it was a lot longer real time, especially because I was stopping to explain things, but very quickly, and in only a single run, I have a character with Attack Shadow Spike and Range Shadow Spike. If you're trying to do that in your other runs, it would be very difficult because of how many options the game is going to be giving you in your tactic selection screens. So hopefully that helps you guys out with setting up your own runs. Like I said, if you have any questions about anything, feel free to ask, and I'll try to get back to them as soon as I can. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.